Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So now we will concentrate on the principle number 7. So if you can remember in the principle number 6 what we told market is a good way to allocate resources or organize the economic activities and hence allocate resources. Okay. The next principle, principle number 7 we are telling that sometimes so government can sometimes improve the market outcome. So, what we are telling here that although market is a very good way, in fact very powerful mechanism through uh, efficiently allocate resources across economic agents within a society. By efficiency what we are referring uh, you can remember efficiency we told whatever resources are there within a society uh, best way to utilize that or using that resources if uh, the society is able to produce the maximum amount of goods and services then we can tell that that society is efficiently utilizing its resources. right? So, when we are telling that market is a good way to allocate uh, resources, uh, that means uh, if we, are, we allow market to operate freely, it is supposed to deliver the efficient outcome, but that depends on certain other factors like institutions. Okay? in any economy say uh, people they have to enjoy their property rights, I have certain property, I have certain resource, I have to enjoy that uh, that resources or uh, ownership right over that resource whatever I own right. And that ownership right whether I am able to enjoy or there is some violation or somebody is creating some disturbance in that, what makes yours that definitely law and order situation or not only law and order situation, law and order and other associated institutions, if those institutions work perfectly, uh, deliver their role what they are supposed to deliver, then market can be able to deliver the efficient outcome. So, sometimes uh, market may fail to deliver efficient outcome, if the associated some or other institution fail to uh, do its job what it is supposed to do. right? So, like in this kind of context, so market failure is basically, so there is a terminology we will introduce here, it is called market failure, market failure, market failure by market failure what we are referring when free market or even if you allow a market to operate freely, it is unable to deliver the efficient outcome. That kind of situation we refer as market failure. And what are the reasons for that? For market failure there are two reasons, two possible reasons which may make a market to fail. What are those? One is externality, externality and another is market power. Okay. What is externality? By externality we refer someone's action is actually affecting someone else. We will, we, we will give an example exactly the same way market power also we, we, will, we will explain those using always some examples so that it will be easily understood to you people. Okay. So, market so externality is what? Suppose I am doing some actions and it affects someone else who is not responsible he has to uh, get. It may be that and that externality may be negative may be positive also means 
whatever because of my action it may be negatively affected or some other person some bystander uh, he or she may get negatively affected he or she may get positively affected also we will give those examples. So, that is by externality we, we are referring that kind of situation market power by market power what we are telling when uh, one organization or one person or a small group of persons or a small group of uh, group of uh, people who are organizing. So, they have substantially large amount of control uh, within the market right. Different types of market we will discuss uh, sometimes later that uh, competitive market, monopoly market, oligopoly market and all those things. Uh, in elaborately we will discuss that time when we will discuss those each of the we will introduce each of those markets right. But uh, I am sure this monopoly this terminology monopoly monopoly this terminology I think many of you heard and when you are you are hearing that terminology something immediately come to your mind at least some of your mind. By monopoly we are telling that it is basically in the entire market only one seller is there. And since one seller is there, that person has uh, substantial control over the market to influence the price, okay? because I am the sole tiger of that product to, de to deliver that product into the market. right? So, it is my wish what, what uh, price I will set. Of course, that monopoly producer also will follow certain mechanism, certain principle to set his price and all. Those will be, we will discuss exclusively or exhaustively in monopoly market and all. But by monopoly, it is basically since one person has the control over the entire market supply, okay, so he enjoys certain monopoly power there. So, by market power, we are referring this, this kind of power, where one person or a small group of people who enjoy substantial power to influence market outcome, maybe market price or some market related outcome, price is obviously one of them. Okay. Now, let us so. So, what we are telling that if there is some externality exists or there is some market power exists, then market can fail to deliver the efficient outcome what market is supposed to deliver. Okay. Now, let us give an example a market power example using monopoly and that concepts we act at least to some extent we, we clarify that. As I told that externality can be positive, can be negative as well. So, let us first discuss how it is positive and it can be negative. So, negative and positive. So, suppose I am a smoker, right, and uh, you know that smoke has uh, health hazard, right. So, I am smoking in a public place, okay, and definitely another person who is standing beside me, he has to inhale that smoke what I am, I am releasing, right. So, definitely it has a negative externality over that because the person who is not a smoker at, at least who is not consuming or smoking, he is negatively affected by smoke what I am releasing. right? So, this kind of externality definitely we can term as negative externality because it is negatively affecting because it will create some health hazard to that person although he is not responsible for that smoking. That is negative externality and I am sure all of you can understand in which sense it is negative. Right. Similarly, positive externality can be also there. Okay. Positive externality say for someone else uh, activity, I am getting some benefit. Okay. So, like suppose uh, beside your home, so why uh, many of our home we used to uh, keep some flower pots in our balcony or somewhere, right? Oh, why we keep that? Because we get some benefit, some satisfaction seeing this, those flowers and plants inside home and all, right? So, now suppose beside your home you do not have any uh, flower pot, you did not keep in your home any flower pot, but beside your home there is a big flower garden, someone else is own, own that flower garden, right. So, definitely every day when you are going for walk and all, so you are seeing that flower beautiful different colors of flowers are there, okay. So, you are getting some kind of enjoyment from that, okay. It is some sort of positive externality you are getting that. And since this kind of negative externality or positive externality, I, am, I, I, I will give another beautiful example of positive externality rather, uh, okay. So, uh, since market mechanism, unless the law and order situation or institution 
is such that even this kind of externality is also uh, priced properly. Smoking example person who is smoking and causing health hazard to a bystanders, if we, we have a mechanism that that person is paying some price for maybe health checkup for the bystander, then we can tell that yes, that institution is taken care or is taking care of that kind of negative externality, what I am causing to that person. But if that is not the market pricing situation or that is not the institution or law and order situation in that particular country where we are talking about, definitely how we can improve that, definitely government can intervene there. That is why this principle government can sometime improve the market outcome. And that usually you will see that this uh, that tobacco products and all which has negative externalities right, due to consumption of those negative externality can be generated. Usually those products are heavily taxed by the government in any country okay. and you will see that heavily taxed because by government intervention uh, government wants to extract little bit more price than the tobacco products price, market determined price. Okay. And what government used to do with that excess uh, tax income? Perhaps in any country you will see that government run uh, health system is usually subsidized. Okay. So, perhaps I am consuming cigarette okay, and somebody else who is, is who is not consuming cigarette by getting but getting because of this kind of negative externality so there is a there is a justice system through this kind of tax mechanism government wants to bring into the picture how since market mechanism fails to capture the price of my negative externality what i am causing government is imposing some tax to extract something more some extra money and that money government is redistributing to the health sector so that the people who are getting victimized or getting negatively affected from my consumption, they will be priced less. That is why I am telling that uh, health system is subsidized usually in any government, right. So, that is the way, that is the mechanism how government can intervene and government can improve the free market mechanism also. Okay. A positive externality, let me give you an another beautiful example that, that is and there is an economist uh, whose name is called Mead, James Mead, James Mead. James, James Mead, who first gave its example, Mead's apple honey example, apple honey example. It is a beautiful example. See, one farmer is there who has an apple orchard and another person who is involved in apiculture, you know that the people who, who keep some honey bees into certain boxes to produce honey, right. So, suppose that apiculture person who is doing apiculture, he, his farm is just beside the apple orchard. So, what happens? So, this honey bees they fly surroundings you no know, to collect honey from the nearby flowers right so since there is an apple garden apple orchard just nearby so honey bees needs to travel less to collect more honey okay so as a result nearby proximity of an apple orchard actually increasing the honey production you can understand why honey production is increasing because if this apple orchard is little bit of that flower source of honey is little bit away one day the honeybees may be traveling say two times, here may be five times because it is nearby then need not travel much. Okay? So, as a result honey production is increasing. So, it is a positive externality of apple orchard on honey production. Not only that this honeybees when they are collecting honey from apple orchards or apple flower, right? those honeybees are helping cross pollination. Okay? So, that is also uh, that is also helping production of apple is more. Okay? So, this is not an ex example of positive externality, rather it is an example of bilateral positive externality kind of thing, both a positive externality. Okay? Honey farmer, he is getting more honey output okay? 
because of proximity of an apple orchard and apple farmer uh, is getting more apple production due to this uh, free service by honey bees because cross pollination honey bees are helping right so in this way both way uh, positive externality here is occurring so um, just you you know this example but our essential objective here is to introduce uh, by externality in economics what we refer and how that externality can create some market failure that we have we have given exclusively using that smoking example and since market fails to deliver in that case and the presence of externality or presence of market power market free market fails to deliver the efficient outcome government sometimes intervene there and government improves the market outcome in those kinds of situation this is the principle number 7 so so far we have discussed seven principles now if you can revisit this seven principle first four principle we have already mentioned earlier let me repeat again first four principles are about how one individual maybe an individual agent or maybe a, a, an individual unit of agents like consumption units say household or production units say farm how an individual organization take their decision rationally economically right now uh, principle number 5 6 and 7 these three principle if you revisit you will realize that how uh, uh, two individuals or two group of individuals interact among themselves now we will discuss the last three principle principle number 8 9 10 these three principles are basically how the entire economy of a society operates so uh, let us discuss our principle number 8 principle number 8 a country's country or society whatever a country's standard of living depends on its ability to produce goods and services. So, by standard of living what we refer you, you, you know uh, what is the overall consumption level consumption of both goods and services right. So, definitely if you if you see uh, different countries across the globe right say uh, you can have an, an impression that ok say uh, United States of America or England or some western developed countries their standard of living is very high vis a vis uh, one say Asian country ok India, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh like this maybe Pakistan and all ok their standard of living is not that much uh, that much high like the western developed countries. Again, if you see some African countries, okay, randomly if you take say Kenya, Nigeria, Uganda, these kinds of African countries, perhaps their standard of living even lower than India, uh, Pakistan, Bangladesh and all these countries. Right. Now, uh, this standard of living uh, depends on what? Of course, uh, the amount of goods and services available for consumption of that uh, people of that country. Right. Now, how they will be able to consume? Look at here, sometimes back we have discussed that trade can make each party better up. We have taken two, two countries and how much commodity they can consume. So, they can produce something they can consume. Okay. So, in that way, so uh, for your any country's overall standard of living or how much it is available there to consume, okay, that depends on how much that country can produce. Of course, after the production they can participate in the trade and they can improve little bit more right but it has to be able to produce sufficient amounts of goods and services to be able to to be to for its uh, for its um, people for its uh, members to be able to consume those right so unless you are able to produce that much so look at here and production we have we have demonstrated in the very first uh, lecture that uh, to produce you need certain uh, resources those resources are called factors of production okay 
and we have also classified that four types of factors of production are there land, labor, capital and organization or entrepreneur if you can remember right. So, you will see that land what we define in economics what is land, land is basically natural resources we told right in the first lecture ok. So, if you see any African countries where the standard of living is very less and we used to tell that those are poor countries, poorer countries like that full of natural resources, those countries are full of natural resources, right. But uh, they are not because although abundant or huge amount of natural resources are there, perhaps they do not have enough skilled labor, enough technology, technological know how to convert those natural resources into consumable goods and services, right. That is why they are poorer. I will give an another beautiful example the other side say one country is called Japan right. You know that Japan if, if any of you know it is basically an island countries four, uh, four large islands are there Hokkaido, Honsu, Shikoku, Kyushu four large this is from north to south Hokkaido then Honsu, Shikoku, Kyushu ok. This four large island and so many other small small islands are there these are the main islands. This country is not that much natural resources there. Not only that, it is a disaster prone country. You know that uh, uh, earthquake is quite frequent there. You know, in Japan lands that Pacific uh, ring of fire, it is called Pacific ring of fire means under, under the Pacific Ocean, there is a lot of volcanoes are there. Those make uh, earthquake very frequent there. Okay. So, Japan is a beautiful example where it is not that much having that much natural resources. Moreover, even beyond that, it is very prone to disaster. And since Pacific Ocean is there, no eastern side of Japan, uh, its tropical cyclone and all those kinds of uh, things are quite frequent. In any case, the volcano, not volcanoes, that earthquake is there always or very frequent things, sometimes tsunami is also there. So, it has to manage, right. Even after that, even managing those kinds of uh, disasters, it is very, uh, its standard of living is very high. If you see that its standard of living almost comparable to the western developed countries like uh, United States of America, England or any western European countries. How? Because this country, its uh, technological know-how, they are very advanced. So, within the limited resources, whatever technological know how is there that human capital is much more uh, much more trained manpowers they have and using that they can produce enough number of goods and services which the society or the entire country's people can consume right so that is why uh, they are they are richer country and some countries although full of natural resources are there they are poor ok. So, at the end of the day we have to tell definitely uh, nothing as such to much to understand this principle because unless you are able to generate the sufficient amount of consumable goods and services, how you will be able to consume? That is why its ability to produce goods and services will determine its standard of living. That basically through this principle we are telling. Now, principle number 9, prices rise or increase whatever when government prints too much money ok. By this what we are referring? See in any country ok in India perhaps you people know that whatever the currency notes 10 rupee 20 rupee, 50 rupee, 100 rupee, these kinds of different, different denomination currency notes are there no in circulation in, any, in Indian economy. Uh, those are released by some government authorized organization called Reserve Bank of India that is the central bank in India ok. So, uh, depending on the country's economic activity level ok, certain amounts of currency notes are required uh, to be produce goods and services to be transacted smoothly. Now, suppose one, one year government prints too much of money ok. Suppose say uh, 2 billion uh, or, or uh, 2000 crore of rupees is enough. 
So, government prints 400 crores of rupees okay? and uh, everybody's government is giving whatever income say I, 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 I am do selling my labor force in a uh, labor market right? whatever my salary is government is giving double and government is doing that or double for everybody. So, what will happen? So, everybody has more amount of money in their pocket and that they will do what? They will try to spend that to con purchase goods and services from the market. Right? So, but that much of real goods and services or consumable goods and services are not produced that much in that country. So, what will happen? Limited amount or same amount of goods and services behind that uh, lot more amount of money will go. Okay? Everybody wants to purchase goods and services, more goods and services. So, what will happen? Price level of the country overall price level will increase and when overall price level increases that we refer that inflation. I hope that many of you may have a aware about this terminology inflation when general price level increases. Okay. So, this too much money has a special connotation too much money. So, depending on the economic activity level amount of real goods and services whatever is produced within the country and what are available to be transacted in the market, certain amount of money is enough okay, to keep the money price level in some stable, stable state of affair. Okay. But if government prints too much money or too much means relative to whatever money is required more than that in that sense too much money. Okay then the more amount of money will rush behind less amount of goods and services. So, naturally price level will increase that we will call inflation. Okay. Again suppose in any economy usual economic activities are expanding last year whatever yes now it is a it is an unusual situation due to ongoing pandemic otherwise usually some economic activities uh, expands last year this year may be 5 percent. Uh, production of goods and services increases by 5 percent vis a vis the last year in that way suppose it is different. So, if real goods and services are expanded at, at the rate of 5 percent and government increases the printing of money at the rate of say more than 5 percent then what will happen? Relatively more amount of money will be there in the in people's hand people's pocket and they will try to uh, spend that behind these commodities. Again price level will increase. So, this too much money in the sense that relative to relative to how much money is required vis a vis how much money government is printing and injecting that within the society to be uh, because money what it is it do it facilitate transaction in the market right. So, it will uh, it will eventually uh, causing inflation okay? and as a result price level will increase. So, that is the principle number 9 let us quickly finish principle number 10. Okay? any society faces a short run trade off between inflation and unemployment. In economics, here one term called short run. In economics, there is a specific definition called short run vis a vis long run. So, that we will define in a proper time, sometimes later. For the time being, as a common sense, you understand that short run means relatively shorter span of time. Okay. So, here it is telling this principle is telling that any society faces a short run trade off between inflation and unemployment. Trade off means what? if one increases other will fall. So, if inflation increases unemployment will fall in that sense or if inflation falls unemployment will increase in that sense. Let us try to understand why. So, inflation we understand the price level is increasing. Unemployment, unemployment means joblessness people are searching for job looking for job, but enough job is not available that is why people are not getting job that is called unemployment. Right. So, why society faces a short run trade off between unemployment and inflation? Look, 
when inflation occurs that means price level increases. We have told sometimes back during that principle uh, when we were discussing that people responded to incentives apple apple growers example we brought we told that if apple price increases in the market who are the producers are of apple who are the farmers who produce apple they will try to produce more apple right so if inflation occurs then price level increases in the market so suppliers who are the producers of those goods and services they will try to produce more if they want to uh, produce more then what they have to do they have to utilize more factors of production labor is one essential factor of production so they have to hire more labor as a result unemployment will fall so you can understand why inflation will if inflation increases unemployment will fall let me repeat if inflation falls what will happen price level falls okay if price level falls for the producer community, they will not be encouraged or they will not get that much incentive to produce more commodities and services, rather they will be discouraged to produce more goods and services. So, they will try to produce less, as a result they will try to hire less amount of factors of production, they will be trying to hire less amount of labor, since labor is one essential factor of production unemployment will increase because hiring of labor is less going to be less. So, in that way let me tell you one thing at this uh, level at this instance in this connection in any economy a mild inflation is always good for the economy mild inflation may be 3 percent 4 percent something like that. Why? Because that principle number 8 we told that standard of living will increase only because if that country is able to produce more goods and services right. So, when mild inflation occurs who, who will get benefited? If there is some inflation some mild inflation is there producer class entrepreneur class business class they will get benefited because their cost of production depends on price level what was in the last period yesterday and they are same with that same cost of production they are selling uh, at today's price. So, at yesterday's cost of production if that one pen uh, they need 10 rupee to sell uh, to get their expected profit margin perhaps they are selling in 12 rupees because today price level increases due to inflation. So, income level of this class entrepreneur class will increase who will get uh, or who, whose income level effective income level will fall the salaried people whose income is fixed their purchasing power of their income will fall because same thousand rupees perhaps they are getting salary yesterday today. So, purchasing power of the thousand rupees of money whatever was yesterday purchasing power of real goods and services the same thousand rupees purchasing power fall down today because today price level is increasing or price level has increased. So, for the fixed income people their income will or effective income or purchasing power of their income will go down. If my income increases or people who has the fixed income their income increases or they become more richer they will keep their additional income idle as saving in the perhaps in the bank account. But the business class they will try to invest that whatever if their income increases they will try to invest additional income into another business that will create job opportunities that will create because through investment we are producing or we are creating the uh, factories and all other kinds of resources through which we can produce goods and services okay through which organization or establishment we are building through which we can produce goods and services so business class people if they have more income in their hand they will invest that will that will expand the production base product production level production capacity of the society. So, that is why mild inflation is always favorable for the country because at the end of the day ultimately production of the country will increase due to that investment vis a vis whose income is fixed uh, if they are little bit uh, their income is little bit get down or their purchasing power of the income is little bit get down production level or production base will not be affected of the society. 
let us stop here and we will continue in our uh, next lecture subsequently. So, with this so you can easily understand that this principle number 8, 9 and 10 these three principles if you revisit and relook again you will see that here we are telling how the entire economy operates within a society. Let us stop here, take care for the time being.